Thirdly, the backside of the desert is the place where God's voice alone is heard. You know why we don't hear the voice of God today? There's so many other voices. <laughs> so many other voices. I was in traffic here the other week at a stop light in downtown Statesville, and I suddenly felt a trembling and a shaking. And I thought, what in the world? And the more I sat there, it was just like that. Boom, 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 boom. And I thought, Lord, what in the world is happening? And I turned and looked, and there was some dude in the car right beside me <laughs> with one of those boom boxes. It was not only shaking his car, it was shaking my little Prius. <laughs> that man couldn't have heard anything if he wanted to. Now, this, we laugh about that, but the sad thing is, that's where most of us are. We can't hear what we need to hear because we're listening to too many other voices. Isn't it, isn't it amazing when the power goes out at your house, what happens? Everything gets quiet. The, the oven won't work. The burner won't work. The lights won't work. Curling irons won't work. Hair dryers won't work. The electric razor won't work. And so what do we do? <laughs> we, we just go wild. It was chaos at our home this morning. <laughs> we weren't in a good mood. I'm going to be honest with you this morning. I had to repent on the way to church this morning. Some of you are laughing, but you've been there and done that. Now, the, the desert, seriously now, the desert is the place where God's voice alone is heard. When God sees your burning desire to know, he will speak. Look in verse 4. Wow. What did he say? He said, Moses, Moses. Isn't that interesting? Nobody around. Backside of the desert. Flock of sheep. One man. Bush burning, not burning up. And here's a voice. Moses. Moses. I don't know what he did. The scripture doesn't say exactly all the things that he did. I, I, but I can only imagine. <laughs> God will become personal to you when you look. Are you looking? Are you listening? God will become personal, he said, Moses. Moses. And verse 6 tells us that God will identify himself to you. Listen, when it's the voice of God, you won't have to ask. <laughs> Is that your voice, God? He will identify himself to you. He said, Moses, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Wow. If there were any creatures other than the sheep, everything was absolute silence. God is speaking. You know, it's interesting to me that the Bible says sometimes God speaks in a small, still voice. Sometimes he speaks in thunder tones and volumes, but oftentimes, more than not, it's a quiet, small, still voice of God. Verse 5 tells us that he will not only identify himself to you, but he will instruct you personally. And he did that in verse 5. He said, Moses, take off the shoes of your feet, for the ground on which you stand is holy ground. What is he saying? I really believe in my heart that he's saying, take off the shoes of your everyday walk in life. Lay aside everything that would hinder you from listening to my voice and seeing me and experiencing me and knowing me. For the ground on which you stand is holy ground. Isn't that amazing? That in a desert, the backside of the desert could be holy ground unto God. No, it's not strange when you understand God created that also. Can I suggest that God knows exactly where you're at this morning? 
Even if you're on the backside of the desert of your life, God created everything around you. God knows everything that's going on about you. He's not surprised by this. He's not shocked by this. He's not set back by this. He knows. And he says to you, take off the shoes of your everyday life. I want you to know I'm holy. I'm holy. You see, the problem with the church in America today is she doesn't recognize and know that God is holy. We've made God too commonplace. But here in this fifth verse, the latter part of it, God reminds Moses of his presence and that makes it holy ground wherever it is. So we need the Lord to remind us today that uh, that this place right here is holy ground. It's holy. Did you hear me? It's holy. It's not to be church as usual. It's to be church in the presence of God. And say, oh God, this place is holy ground. Holy ground. And last, we're going to close. The backside of the desert of your life is where God will show you his plan for your life. Verse 10 Verse 10, let's look at it. It's a precious verse. God speaks again and says to Moses, Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. The key here is if you will come to God, he will show you. He will show you his plan and his will for your life. Some of you are struggling with that this very moment, this morning. What does God have in store for me? What is God's plan for my life? What direction should my life take? What does God want me to do? Why am I here in this world? God, what do you want? God says, if you'll come to me, children, come to me, and I will tell you. I will show you. He said, for Moses specifically, he said, I will send you to your Pharaoh. And boy, it was a Pharaoh for Moses. (laughs) A Pharaoh was a big obstacle in Moses' life. It was this same Pharaoh that wanted to take his life when his mother gave birth to him. And so it was a big deal for Moses. And it's a big deal for you this morning, wherever you're at. But God says, if you'll come to me, I'll show you and I'll send you to your Pharaoh. What is Moses' response here? You'll find it in verse 11. Surely he will bow before the great I am. Surely. What does he say in verse 11? He says, why me? (laughs) Of all the responses he could have made, God, why me? I'm just a sheep herder. God says, I know. I know. (laughs) I see you. I created the sheep and I created you. I know. Why me, God? Why me? And he he says, who am I, God, that, that you would do such with me? Who am I? And some of you are saying, well, well, God can't use me. Oh, yes, he can. If you give your life to him, if you'll come to him, and if your heart will desire to hear him and see him and to know him, God will use you. Can you say amen? Amen. He will. If God could use Moses, he said, God, I'm not eloquent of speech. I don't know whether he stuttered when he spoke or not, but he says, "I'm, I'm I'm just not good at speaking. Listen, you don't have to be good at speaking in public. When you're in the desert, there is no public. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) It's just you and God. It's just you and God. So don't worry about being able to speak and what to say and how to say it. Uh, That's not the point. Whatever your Pharaoh is, God will be with you in verse 12. God never asks you to go alone. Isn't it strange that when he got to the desert, he was alone, but then there was a burning bush, and God was in the midst of the burning bush. Oh, how wonderful. How wonderful. When you think you're alone, God shows up. Isn't that good of God? (laughs) That's just like God. And he says, you won't go alone. I've written in my notes here, Moses received the lo, I am with you always of the Lord. (laughs) He said, well, God... (laughs) If you're this great a God to let a bush burn and you can speak to me out of the burning bush and if you call me to go to Pharaoh, well, God, I'll just go. <laughs> I'll, I'll just believe that you can do it. I'll, I'll just go. And I really believe in my heart Moses submitted to the 
I am with you always of Yahweh. And he'll also tell you what to say when you get where you need to be in your favor in front of him. Verses 13 through 15, we won't uh, uh, actually read those, but just make a couple of comments. Moses said, Lord, what if they ask questions? One of my great fears as a pastor when I preach sometimes is somebody just pops up with a question. <laughs> what if they ask a question? Moses said, God, um, this, this man is a learned man. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm fearful of him. What if, what if he asks a question? What do I say? Uh, if, I, if I go to the, the people of Israel, your people, and I tell them that God has called me to lead you out of Egyptian bondage, what am I going to say to them, and what will they say? They will say, what is his name? What, what is his name? This God that has said, you're going to lead us out of Egyptian bondage, you're going to take us away from Pharaoh after 430 years as slaves and mortar and muck and mire of Satan? In the life of Pharaoh? He said, you tell them who I am. Don't worry about what God wants you to do. Don't worry about what he wants you to say. Just know that God is the great I am of your life. Can you say amen? He's the great I am of your life. And that's all he told Moses to tell Pharaoh, I am has sent me. And some of you are thinking, well, how, how would they know I am? Well, listen, when God reveals himself, they'll know. <laughs> they'll know. They'll know. Could I suggest to you a simple observation here this morning in closing? That God placed Moses in a time of retirement for 40 years. He was 40 years old when he led the sheep of his father-in-law Jethro into the backside of the desert. And he stayed in that place for 40 years. Tending his flock. Being obedient to God. And the day come. And God said, I want you to go to Pharaoh. And tell him, let my people go. 40 years is nothing in the eyes of God who created time itself. So don't be, don't be off guard with that. Don't worry about that. Moses learned several things, and I want to share them with you in closing. He learned that this place was a place of communion with God. Wherever you are, it ought to be a place of communion with God. He learned it was a place of reality. He learned it was a place of no pretending. He learned it was a place where everything is set aside. A place where it was just God and him. And then he learned, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Whatever, Lord. And if you read on in the book of Exodus, you will discover that he went to Pharaoh. Pharaoh. And with all the boldness of God, he said, God, the great I am, said, let my people go. And eventually he did. And then God destroyed all the enemies of Moses and of Israel. Are you on the backside of the desert of your life this morning? Look up and see the face of God. Let's stand to our feet in prayer. I'm going to ask the pianist to come and play very softly a selection. I'm going to ask that we be in sincere and fervent prayer right now. This room is filled with people who have desert experiences in their life, including your pastor. But I've discovered something wonderful in my desert experience that I am not alone. Have you ever felt that you were in a room one time and sometimes in the room was filled with people and you felt so alone? You can feel alone right here in this great, wonderful congregation. But in the desert experience of your life, if you'll just look up, God will reveal himself to you. 
listen for his still small voice